seen and found uh, on uh, the MCM web page of the event web page later on, which we'll be informing you about. Once again, thank you for joining us and thank you for spending uh, your afternoon with the American Chamber of Commerce. And without further ado, Michael, please take the lead. Okay, yes. Hello, oh, buongiorno. Ahoy, hey. Konnichiwa. Ni hao, hola, guten tag, bonjour, privet. G'day, mate. Well, Welcome to this very special webinar about an important topic of our recent times. We'll look at many aspects of what online and distance education is and how it affects the education of our children and how it's forced the vocation of education to move into the digital age. My name is Michael Creswell. I'm the head of school at the Koshitsa International School. Uh, I really don't want to go on about myself, but I've specialised in not only international education for the past 10 years around the world, but more recently in higher educational research into uh, online and distance education in the UK. Uh, I just want to thank AmCham for supporting this session and allowing myself and Koshitz International School to lead this session for you guys. Uh, and being able to provide this for you all ensures that our community has an access to education that's in line with the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goal of Quality Education. So let's, uh, let's go straight into it. Uh, there's five uh, of distance learning. Uh, as you can see, there's access and collaboration and interactions and equity and and equality and developing skills for the world we live in. However, there's also five main challenges of distance education. Uh, one commonality is access being both uh, a benefit and a challenge. And acceptance of diversity is also reflected in an inequality and equity as a benefit, which also lead into language and other barriers of social, emotional, mental, cultural and physical uh, issues. And I'm sure that for the past few months, we've experienced some of these benefits and challenges for but where, where can these things be resolved and supported or applied more appropriately? There, there is heaps of university articles and studies about online and distance education, and many of them are available through open educational resources uh, and websites. And in particular, a while ago, this sad realisation appeared through educational institutions around the world. You see, even today, nothing has changed for some people in their child's education. We see the teacher with the interactive whiteboard at the front of the classroom and children sitting at desks in rows and a child one by one comes and writes something on the board. Wow. In Vietnam and Indonesia, they would say, same, same, but different. And uh, an Indigenous Australian would probably just laugh at you and show you the same thing, but their, theirs is uh, 60,000 years old. Now, COVID-19 has been a blessing in disguise with many ripple effects for humanity on so many levels, especially in education. It's forced those who have old practices and closed mindsets to reconsider a lot of things. And this is what principals are saying in Australia about the COVID-19 educational revolution. It's about the role of the teacher, inability of doing the same old habits and realising that it is about the community and the relationships with people. And communicate and collaborate with learning that is in your own interests. Now, some of my own past colleagues, mentors, parents and students from around the world have also shared with me their take on the situation. COVID has helped education to evolve for those institutions that have remained stagnant. And we all realise from our lockdowns and isolations from our families and friends that we must network and we've got to communicate and we've got to make connections with others in order to survive. If this is how the world works, then this is how learning must work. Yeah. Now, how do we learn together? Communities have been defined in many ways. Early definitions often associated them with a physical place such as a street or a village and this meant that when people began to use the internet, the idea of a virtual community was initially viewed as with scepticism and provoked a lot of debate. That debate came to an end when the, with the rise of social media and it made clear to people that you could function as communities online. And as a result, the definitions of community 
are used these days typically they do not focus on physical location and debate now focuses on the particular benefits and challenges associated with online. Uh, 1996, a psychologist uh, proposed that communities are defined by four elements, uh, spirit associated with a feeling of belonging, trust, development of group norms and expectations, trade, exchanging skills, resources and knowledge, and art, creating together. The Communities of Inquiry framework uh, shown above was developed by Canadian educators and academics and it's been very influential with technology enhanced learning in the field of online and distance education. This framework offers a model for how people learn together online and it covers not only technology and how it changes education but how it can enhance existing uh, values. A critical community of learners from an educational perspective is composed of teachers and students transacting with specific purposes of facilitating, constructing and validating and understanding and developing capabilities that will lead to future learning. And such a community encourages cognitive independence, social independence simultaneously. And it's the, the cross, crossroads of both of these aspects of this seemingly contradictory relationship that creates the spark and ignites a true educational experience that has personal value and socially redeemed. Now to find a community of inquiry, you have to have a network in place to communicate with. Now, as parents, did you see children just get given a worksheet to complete and return to the teacher? Did any of the students get a chance to collaborate or work together on a task or project? through online and distance means. A networked learning approach emphasizes these things. Learning takes place in a social context. It identifies needs and help others define their own needs. Learners perceive a genuine reason for working together. They encourage and facilitate each other's learning. It's assessed by individuals, peers and, and their teachers. And the teachers and learners work together to make positive changes. Now, networks and the links between them in a learning network are the nodes being the learners and the educators and the links are the contacts that they make these can be one way for example your teacher zooms you or two-way you email your teacher teacher emails you back studies of network learning are concerned with the social and organizational structures that underpin the processes of learning and teaching now what brings all this together is connectivism it's a, a networking and inquiry approach to learning and teaching uh, is exactly what it says. It's relatively new pedagogical theory in education, which formulated from inquiry and social constructivism, collaboration and community uh, and communication, primarily concerned with technology. It's a socially connected process of learning uh, in a networked world a network forming process and knowledge is a network forming product. It takes concepts forms conceptual connections, uh, it goes through social spaces and it is the pedagogical approach for the digital age. Now you know you might see that this is uh, really developing something called a community of practice. But, um, practice can be designed in in a number of ways and it's uh, it's not everything called a community is a community of practice. A neighbourhood for him, for instance is often called a community but it's usually not a community of practice. So these characteristics here are crucial. The domain which is uh, membership it implies a commitment to it and a shared competence distinguishes members from other people. And uh, the domain is not necessarily something recognised as expertise. Um, the community, the community is uh, is where they build relationships and enable them to to learn from one another. And uh, having the same job or the same title does not make for a community of practice unless. And then the practice, it's uh, well, it's not merely a community of interest. People who like certain kinds of movies, for instance, uh, members of a community of practice are practitioners. They develop a shared repertoire of resources, experiences, stories, tools, 
ways of addressing reoccurring problems. Uh, and, and that's how it's shared. Uh, so it takes time and it takes sustained interaction. A good conversation with a stranger on an airplane may give you all sorts of interesting insights, but it doesn't itself make for a community of practice. It's got to be more or less self-conscious. Uh, so it's a combination of these three institutes of community practice, and by developing these three things, cultivate. And there you go. So there's sort of that cycle there of what it may look like. There's a trust, sharing, sharing practice, you, a collective intelligence and understanding. Um, and it's never ending, it keeps happening. So it's not a one way goal orientated practice. Now, another factor that's often left behind is the concept of inclusion. Everyone is unique and has particular needs and abilities. And there were many parents left frustrated and alone, drowning at home during the lockdown because their child's their child might have needs or abilities which were unable to be supported by the educational technology implemented by the school or statewide institutions. However, there are many assistive technologies available, but educators and parents just don't know how, don't know about them. And some of them are seen here. You know, and what, what gets forgotten is that diversity, uh, the diversity and cultural differences and online interactions can be highly valuable resources which enhance learning when designed the right way. Um, maybe you've come across some of these yourself. You know, on, on a Mac, you've got a you've got a button where you can click and have a magnifying glass uh, pop up and, and help you out. So some things could be embedded in the software or the device itself, and the others uh, you may have to uh, install or or need to put uh, included on a website, such as widgets. These two, big, these two biggest issues here were evident during the lockdown for its teachers and institutions. How we share data and what for, where it goes, security and live streaming. Now, luckily, when part of an institution such as uh, the International Baccalaureate, like Koshiti, we're well informed in how to manage and operate the, through these issues. Some of you may have heard about class sessions in Asia being infiltrated by anonymous, uncontrollable pornography, all due to the sharing of a link to join that class. Now, in the network of world schools that Koshitsa International School is, we have, a, we have certain policies and agreements in place on what's possible for particular age groups of learners when it comes to online data and content. And there's some G GDPR rules that you know, some people and some educators just are not that aware of, and that's why you have these problems that we've, we've recognised during the coronavirus. And uh, this leads us towards the, uh, the last section on this, placing old habits with technology and not enhancing them, like mentioned in the earlier slide. This concept is called technology enhanced learning. Now, TEL subsumes the older term of e-learning, which was used with a confusing variety of, me of meanings. You can only enhance your use of technology if it's supported through various levels. And it all begins with the institution. The situation, the, the state policies and educational technology, the progress with it uh, across the state. It's Say, oh yes, well we have ed tech all in all in Slovak schools and have those interactive whiteboards on the wall where kids can come and touch the screen. Uh, well, I hate to say it, but that's like twenty years old, and no one purchases them. Yet. It's the same as having a blackboard when the whiteboard with a marker pen came onto the scene. An absolute waste of space, and it promotes instruction. Twentieth century approaches to teaching and learning. And I can tell you that I've never met one the interactive whiteboard. Teachers around the world all knew that they wouldn't last long. And take it from me, because I've lived and worked in eight different countries and different continents, I'm glad to see those big things on the wall disappear. What is best practice? With students across all age groups satisfied with the interactive whiteboards? No way. How do you enhance learning with technology? Well, there's three potential benefits of technology-enhanced learning. 
It's about efficiency, where existing processes carried out in a more cost-effective, time-effective, sustainable or scalable manner. We're improving existing processes and the outcomes and looking for radical positive change in existing processes, producing new ones. So the problem with the interactive whiteboard, it wasn't new at all. It was just something that was old looking the same. But so how do you do this then? Well, technology enhanced learning comes in a few different ways. However, there are four main domains that you'll come across in online distance education. TEL is about openness or open pedagogy, and it's about having open educational resources. It redefines resources and material. In the IBPYP, there are no textbooks. When I went to the local English bookstore here in Koshitsa in the centre the other day, I explained that I'll be needing only some books for my learning media centre. And in the 20th century mentality, people would call it the library. But uh, at Koshitsa International School, it's a central hub of resources and more. The man behind the counter said, oh, well, you will be needing textbooks and student books. And I instinctively laughed without making the man feel strange. And I had to say sorry, but... No, we don't use textbooks. That's a 20th century thing. Education has moved on from the industrial age into the digital age, and learners must contribute and connect with the world. Resources are around them at the tips of the finger. Mobile learning is being able to access and learn anywhere. And nowadays, you can do an entire UK postgraduate and PhD all online. The same goes for children's education. You cannot teach children who live in this digital world with means of a past world and mobile learning flattens the classroom, opens the world to endless possibilities available. Now learning at scale is focused on educating in bulk and this is seen in courses and something you may have heard of called the Khan Academy. They provide micro credentials and professional development, not only for adults, but middle and high school students. And these can open doors for anyone to gain new or develop skills and knowledge in an area of interest that can provide a better future. And I've always been doing these because it's helped myself uh, grow in many ways in my own interests. One of the most powerful signs, this type of technology enhanced learning combines things like anybody's able to collaborate and communicate, collect data, go on field trips, use technology to con contribute to some kind of uh, user interest and or passion for some greater purpose, including self satisfaction I could give you a more official definition, but I'll, I'll let you uh, inquire into that one. What citizen science made me think of was how this is also a form of mobile learning, and I wondered how universal, universally connected citizen science makes us be and how learning and teaching went beyond the ideas of a traditional concept of school as the institution and knowledge keeper of all that is necessary. If you cannot be a citizen, science with your, citizen scientist with your students, you're not enhancing your teaching and learning for the 21st century. So how can all of this be done? Well, it begins in the learning design. A simple way could be seen here in what is called the KWL chart. It starts by students and learn what they know, what they want to know, and what they have learned. And this is a continual cycle of refre reflecting, choosing, and acting. Task, it, can, it cannot be a task completed all at once. This takes a lot of time, research, critical, uh, by yourself and with others. But where does KWL take us? It can only take you down a road of inquiry. There are different schools for different purposes, and if you choose to have your child live in a rigid bubble with a particular outlook, then yes, of course, when you put your blinkers on the race, they only know one way about things. This would be a limiting view of who we are and where we are in place and time. Therefore, to effectively learn and teach through online and distance education, it has to be through a learning design of inquiry. It starts finding out and around the cycle you go. 
this process is, is reflection. How a teacher could use citizen science in this design takes the possibilities of educational technology through the roof and to the stars. I suppose you can see how different Koshita International School is as compared to other settings in the region. And just like online and distance educational theories and technology in hand, our approach to an educational design is something like as if it were 3D, as old school methods. However, this is nothing new, and it really is just about progression and the evolution of the industrial era into the digital era in education. The differences of old and new curriculum models show what you or I may have sadly experienced to what is being done around the world today. Here's a few ideas that give you a sneak peek at what we're actually doing in Koshitsa International School. And for, you know, we've got iPads and we've got no big interactive whiteboard on the wall um, where it's about collaboration, communication, multi augmented reality, virtual reality equipment. And we're all So what a 21st century approach to it does is that it brings together subjects which no longer stand alone by themselves. This is what's called transdisciplinary. Learning is not just with the learner, it is the community along with how it is done. And this is lifelong learning. Those are the three key elements that, uh, that sort of form uh, learning that's done in the 21st century. This replicates exactly what it's like online and distance education uh, in, in that world. Now, sadly, this is the current state of things in the Slovakian education. An uneducated Thai woman who acts as a teacher aide in every day and gets paid more than a university by an educator in this country tells you something. If you're a parent who's struggled during COVID-19, have you really understood why? If you get paid in peanuts, I feel that uh, Koshitsa International School will drive the future progress for the entire region and push for reform at the highest levels. Slovakia are able to deliver the International Baccalaureate Primary as authentic as this. Now, these practices in online and distance education all support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In and it's these three in particular. These three in particular is what we're doing right now. It's what we're doing at international. And it's what online and distance education uh, can do when it's done right. So how can these goals be addressed in education that can constitute quality? Have any of us these as teachers or parents. Now, parents can do something to help make this happen. First of all, you've got to get active in your child's online and distance learning. You've got to engage in citizen science and do some of your own books of things that matter most for you and your child and their education. You've got to push in institutions to reform or develop their teachers and, then, and demand their practices to change. If lower primary, time must be short managed in periods. You've got to facilitate inquiry and creativity, encourage independence, make it meaningful, and talk about what they've learned, incorporate citizen science, find those open educational resources and be present. All children want all the children want is that their parents are there to believe in them and show them that they care. That is the biggest motivation. It's the self, uh, social, emotional stuff. So parents, they know what learning would be like by teachers delivering online and distance education. Screen time must be short and powerful. Inquiry doesn't happen by sitting in front of a screen all day. Teachers have to be 21st century educators and be proficient in the up-to-date educational technology. Otherwise, they are stale, ineffective, boring, unhappy people who will soon be out of a job. 
what kind of role model do you want for your child in their future? If teachers want to be effective online, they must gain professional development by changing their pedagogy. Small groups, collaborative, facilitate students. These are good to know as parents so that you can also be educators of your child. Parents, you are the primary educator of your child and you must know that how teaching and learning is done in the most effective way so that you can also replicate the expectations relevant for the digital age. So, how do you design and evaluate online? Yeah, to end, I mean, you've got a whole bunch of educational... So, where do I find them? Where do they come from? Where do I start? Oh, here's a few examples here. Uh, this is a bunch of some citizen science platforms. Zooniverse in particular is a particularly good one. It's a bit like a, a database of citizen science. Uh, uh, Five-year-old uh, international school students being citizen scientists in an inquiry-based classroom in Switzerland. And what they were doing was they were locating, categorizing, marking various, spe various species of penguins and Antarctic animals from live video and photos of research equipment uh, set up down there by universities studying animal habits and, and all sorts of other things. And this was, of course, the only one aspect of learning in, in the learning journey, but it was, so it was such a powerful component and meaningful action and inquiry by enhancing the use of technology. It wasn't the only thing we did, but it was a part of it. And this really is connectivism when the learning design is done right. The students were contributing to university research and they were five years old. They'll lead you down the right. Um, a simple one is Oxford Hour with eBooks. Um, the ABC Australia Education website Fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, when you, if you've got middle school or high school students, uh, and even for parents, you know, Future Learn is, a, is a, uh, an excellent platform for MOOCs, uh, but there's a few others like Coursera. So there's a few, but like I said, once you jump down that rabbit hole of open educational resources, you'll, it's an endless trip. Uh, one particular thing I like is there's open uh, uh, university journal articles and you'll find a lot of university journal, journal articles on distance education on these open platforms. So that's probably all I've got. And thanks for listening and finding out more about online and distance education. And you can keep up to date with Koshitz International School through all our social media means by clicking these icons here. And that will take you to our sites. You'll get a good insight into what we're doing and, and uh, what kind of education we'll be providing. It will be a revolutionary step into the future for Eastern Slovakia and a leader of education for the entire country. I hope that you consider your child's future by joining our learning journey and becoming an international baccalaureate primary years program world school so that we can nurture internationally minded global citizens. Uh, and a lot of what we do with uh, online and distance education is reflected in uh, our practices at this school as well. We have a plan B if all hell breaks loose, <laughs> like uh, COVID once again. Uh, and um, instead of being reactive, we, we are very proactive. And uh, I guess that's all I've got about it. And if you've got any questions, you know, please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Uh, as we said, please, please ask away in the chat window of uh, this uh, WebEx call, or please just ask away should you wish to join us uh, by video. Hi, Michael. If I may ask the first question, this is Marek yeah. uh, from MGM. Uh, remarkable presentation. Thank you very much. It was, it was uh, very informative. Um, um, 
I would like to ask, uh, what's your perception of the mindset of, uh, of people in this part of the world? Um, compared to what you've seen in other uh, other other uh, countries, for example, uh, in respect of education and approach to learning and uh, uh, getting grades, etc. Uh, how do you see Slovakia in this respect? Yeah, well, uh, for me, I feel like, um, uh, like I mentioned with that sort of uh, diagram about the learning community, uh, as part of the, the learning at, in Koshitz International School. Yes, it's not just about the learner itself. It is the learning community. And, uh, you know, we realise that uh, parents are, are part of this journey in understanding, uh, you know, what a, a fresh education is and, and what it means and how they're going. So, yeah, we will be breaking down a lot of discourses and, and old habits of what is right or, or what works uh, and uh, you know that's something that will be uh, part of the the growing pains of of developing such a, a wonderful school like this one here so um, yeah I mean it will be you know you've got to be able to be open-minded and you've got to be um, tolerant and respectful and you really embrace uh, the openness of what this program is uh, and and be willing to try new things, and and those things are part of the uh, the type of character and person we are we we are trying to be, um, and uh, and that's who we're trying to create those internationally minded global citizens, not just in the learner but in the community as well. So um, it's a very open approach to uh, the community, so that you understand what this means for you and your child. And uh, it's um, it's really going to break down a lot of barriers and and create new understandings for those, uh, just like a lot of us who went through a whole different uh, uh, style of education when we were young. So, yeah, you've you've got to have the right mindset and you've got to be uh, willing to to open yourself up to to new things. And and those are the sort of attributes that we teach at Kushitz International School. Thank you, Michael. There is a question. What could be the advice for Slovak teachers? Uh, where to start and change his or her online education approach? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a bit like anything, really. Sometimes it comes down to having the right mentors, having the right, uh, you know, uh, professional learning network uh, that you can either yourself or build with and your colleagues, which is then become a community of practice. I think one easy way to do it is is where it starts with Twitter. Um, there's educate a lot of educators are using Twitter, and I get so many great ideas, so many wonderful resources uh, just from Twitter from educators around the world. Um, so it's a matter of developing your own sort of professional learning network, and then actually going out and doing about it maybe it means i need to do uh, a three-week massive open online course that is all about um you know digital uh digital apps in the classroom and there's apps there's there's courses out there exactly for that and i've done them myself uh because my biggest fear as an educator is falling behind and being obsolete in my practices and my understanding and you've got to be a life lifelong learner if you are not going to be uh, continually learning. That's how educators get phased in the profession because you're just irrelevant. So you, you've really got to take it on for yourself professionally to say, um, you know, I've really got to make a consured, uh, an effort here to, um, to develop myself. And an easy way is through social media, especially Twitter. Thank you, Michael. I guess Twitter needs to get a little bit more popular in uh, this part of the world. Um, is there any other question? If I may have, Martin. My name is Hello, Roland. Uh, hi, Michael. I'm from Amcham as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I'm sorry that we were not able to attract a bigger crowd, 
because I think what you talk about is really relevant for many Slovaks. But um, anyway, that's the case. Uh, I would like to ask you, I don't know how much familiar you are with the Slovak educational system, but uh, is there anything you would like to take from Slovakia when going abroad? So is there something positive you would uh, like to emphasize and actually use maybe in your future career in some other country? That's my first question. And the second one is, if you allow me, uh, let's suppose that you have uh, you know, like a group of people who are thinking of staying in Slovakia and parents with their kids and kids uh, are thinking, parents are thinking of uh, enrolling their kids into the best school so that they are ready to study in Slovakia. Is there any difference you would, uh, you would really mark it uh, to these parents that these kids uh, will have better you know, preparation for studying in Slovakia as well? So basically the mindset and, and uh, the, the overall approach to education you be different than from the state uh, system. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, good question. The first one I would say, um, the, uh, the weekly timetable of, uh, let's say, primary schools in Slovakia, there's so much time for, uh, for play, social development, uh, because the, the learning time, uh, classroom time ends quite early. Um, and then you've got sort of like this after school care. Um, you know, considering everything with uh, isolation and the lockdown, the social emotional development is, uh, you know, number one priority across all education, educational uh, institutions around the world at the moment. So. You know, if there was something that I would take away from Slovakia, then it would be, you know, uh, recognizing the need for, um, you know, celebrating and supporting the fact that you've got that time to have, uh, to be social, to, to play and, and to be free as a child. Um, you know, it's, it's not really like that when you go to Asia. So, you know, one is having a balance of that. But two, I think that's probably a really good thing because there'd be a lot of teachers that would love to just teach until one o'clock or so. Um, and then the other part was, um, uh, let's see. Well, it, it, I think the main thing would be the, uh, the richness of what this curriculum and what this philosophy is. I mean, to me, in my eyes, if you were to move from this type of uh, uh, environment and be put into a Slovak, uh, sort of typical Slovak situation of, of teaching and learning, um, you're probably going to find it boring and <laughs> you, you probably find that um, you know, you, you're far ahead of, you're far ahead of, but you just, may have problem fitting into the routine and system of the way the uh, teaching and learning is delivered. Um, because again, it, it may be a bit different from the collaborative communicating group work, uh, the, the thinking and the transdisciplinary skills of character development to maybe I'm just doing a test. Um, so it will, that would be it would be more a social emotional challenge rather than an academic challenge for someone swapping over to a, a traditional Slovak uh, system uh, but at the same time the IB is built on research over you know decades uh, of work and all the research is that uh, children that are in this uh, educational system achieve at the same level and in most cases, above and beyond any educational context anywhere in the world. And that's not just me saying it, like I said, that's decades upon decades of educational research about this philosophy, this approach. So they wouldn't have a problem surviving. It would just be a matter of um, dealing with the, uh, the environmental context of teaching and learning uh, more so.
Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Ronald, for the question. Uh, maybe one from my side. Um, I understand you mentioned that uh, that you do not really use uh, uh, books uh, in, in teaching uh, when it comes to the IB format and, and the whole idea of the international school. On the other hand, uh, I have seen a couple of international schools with massive libraries. So the kids are actually very much inspired to read. So could you please explain to us the importance of reading for these children? Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, language, uh, in a school like ours, everybody is a teacher. It is a full immersion into English. It's not this uh, half Slovak, everybody's talking Slovak, and oh, we do English here and there. No, it's a full immersion into English and the learning media center, the center of everything. It's not just books, it's laptops, it's the internet, it's educational resources. It's, excuse me, it's, it's got uh, everything you need. Uh, it's got languages in, in all, it's not just English books, not just Slovak books. It's multiple languages. So whatever the demographics of the school are, we will be able to support mother tongue learning. So if it was a Chinese student, which is, this is a very common experience, for example, in, in all international baccalaureate schools is, let's say for instance, a Chinese student gets plumped into a, a, an English speaking school in, in Sweden and they know no English, they know no Swedish, that's what happens in an internet and, and that's something that our teachers are highly skilled and knowledgeable about how to deal with. And so, yes, the, the language, everybody's a language teacher. The, the Learning Media Centre is the centre hub of, of all res resources. Um, and beyond that, the school has systems in place and specialist teachers in place that support mother tongue, that support English as an addi additional language. They support the Slovak children with Slovak or the international children with Slovak. And again, that's done as an, in an inclusive way. You can't speak English, so you're being taken out of class and you've, you're in this class when they do English. No, the, the support is in the classroom because the biggest support is from their peers. So it's not only from the teacher, it's not only an individualized approach, it's from their peers, the teacher and, and the institution itself. And yes, the, of course there's going to be books, as, but again, it's a digital age, it's probably going to be an e-book. But yes, the library will have books. You can go check books out and take a book home to read because, you know, that's, that's still something you can do. But uh, uh, having an educational sort of uh, curriculum or program devised on the format of a textbook driving your knowledge and expertise, no, that's not there. And what does that do? That makes the teacher actually be more creative, have better skills, be way more knowledgeable, and they're able to accommodate the needs and understand uh, the developmental process of each and every learner because the curriculum is not about standardization, it's about a developmentally appropriate uh, approach to teaching and learning. And that's what matters the most. You're not going to be marking anybody A, B, C, one, two, three. Um, it, it's, it's where they are in place and time. And it's how we, the school and the parents, know where they're at and then take them to uh, even further. So. Yes, reading is, of course, part of it, but that's one little aspect of language. Thank you very much, Michael, for your answer. There's one more question from, from Ronald. Yeah, thank you. If you allow me, uh, one more question. You, you touched the issue of uh, you know, wages of uh, teachers in Slovakia, which is very, very important and, and sensitive for Slovaks. Uh, but I would like to twist it a little bit. Uh, what is the social status of teachers of uh, uh, these kind of international schools? When you go to Asia and you can be in a private or uh, public school, and th their social status is quite high. 
and it is the respect for authority. And it's not necessarily connected with the salaries. It's simply the tradition. That's my opinion. And I think it used to be also here in this part of the world that especially when there was like just before the Second World War, you know, like to be a teacher, it really meant something. Even kids know that teachers are not well paid and uh, they have problems with discipline and to respect authority. Countries like Finland, you know, and you, you really have the best the best students going to apply for the teaching profession in Slovakia, unfortunately, it's not the case. And even if you have these smart students applying and studying at the university to become a teacher, eventually they switch their career and they do something else because it's a fully paid job. How are you going to tackle this uh, in, in Slovakia? Maybe I hope, you know, like your staff will be much, much better paid. But uh, does it bring respect among students who will be you know, Slovaks yeah. this, uh, this position? Yeah, yeah. Look, the bottom, the, the ultimate foundation of, of what Košice International School is and the International Baccalaureate is this thing called the, the learner profile. And they are 10 attributes. And it basically summarizes the mission statement and vision statement of our school, as well as the International Baccalaureate. And these 10 attributes is basically who you're trying to be or strive to be and try to develop and grow into. And those things are not, it's not a student profile. It literally is a, a culture, a way of life. And so for me, I would say you've got to live, eat and breathe so the IB learner profile in all that you do. And that is what the, the environment will be like, the, you know, and that is who you are. And so, you know, that, having that as the ultimate value and in, in what the type of human you are trying to create and, and become, then, you know, th those, those ideas of behaviour management and, and problem, problem students because they, they don't respect or anything, um, you know, that's really, that's a really difficult concept in the International Baccalaureate because it's quite rare. Uh, because again, the learner profile is everything of who you are and what you do. Uh, so in that sense, that's going to change a lot of the, the perception of, um, again, the culture of teaching and learning, the culture of the environment that you're creating and, and that the school uh, holds to their heart. And that's what the learner profile is. And without that sort of vision statement in that is, you know, put together into practice in these 10 attributes, then a school can be heartless and, and, and have no meaning. And that's when you end up having those, those problems and, and disrespect in an institution. Thank you, Michael. Ronald, I hope this answers your question. Definitely, thank you. And if there are any other questions uh, now is the last chance to ask the way so it's mark again if 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 there's no other i have tons of questions uh, but but uh, one of it would be uh the community you said the community uh this is not a very popular term uh i would say uh because it's a paradox that we had communism and it eliminated Basically, all the communities uh, from from the um, uh, from from the space. So, so uh, what what do you mean by community? How do you define it, and uh, how it can help uh, to educate uh, our children? Well, the learning, yeah. Well, the learning community is really uh, re knowing where we are, so locally and internationally. The learning community is all around us. It's a uh, it's it's not really trying to create a little uh, a little isolated group as such. It's being recognizing that the learning is within the community all around us, and the community for the school would be directly with the parents, the school, the child, and then you know what when they are you know part of in, part of this inquiry process is action. So. To, to take action, they're going to take action within their community or even beyond that. So the learning community is really a concept that is um, 
it really is a resource. Having a textbook, the textbook is what is outside, use it, and what we can do with it. Thank you, Michael. I believe that was probably our last question of today. Thank you very much for a fantastic presentation. Very inspiring, very interesting. We will be using it a lot in the future. I can assure you of that. And thank you very much, uh, the people who joined uh, our uh, webinar today. Uh, we appreciate you spending your time with the American Chamber of Commerce. And with that, I would like to wish you uh, a great weekend. And thank you very much again for joining. Good. Thank you, guys.